If you're in the market for a smallish luxury sedan for around $50,000 or $60,000, you've got plenty of options. For example, there's the stalwart BMW M340i and the Mercedes AMG C43, but then you've also got upstarts like the Lexus IS500 F Sport Performance and Acura TLX Type S. But if none of those have the understated style or the green cred that you're looking for, then let me recommend to you the Volvo S60 Recharge. But before I go any further, please be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media using the handle at MotorOne.com so that we can keep on bringing you content like this. And as always, if you want more information on the Volvo S60 or any other car that's on your mind, please be sure to check out MotorOne.com. The Volvo S60 definitely feels a lot more familiar and perhaps a little bit commonplace compared to some of its newer and flashier rivals. After all, this same basic design has been on the market since 2018, but that doesn't detract one bit from what is already a very handsome and cohesively designed package. Up front, you get Volvo's signature Thor's hammer headlights, as well as a square grille with a unique texture that helps set the car off just a little bit from that 2018 S60. There are a couple of clues that you're looking at a plug-in hybrid recharge variant of the S60. First of all, there's a charge port on the driver's side front fender, and secondly, there's a complete lack of exhaust outlets on the rear. Instead, you just get a silver diffuser panel on the bottom of the rear bumper. This car is also a black edition, which is an option package that includes gloss black accents for the grille, badging, mirror caps, and 19-inch wheels, as well as some unique touches inside as well. I don't usually like blackout packages, but I don't mind this particular one, and that's because it doesn't steal any of the attention away from this car's attractive, basic design that I fell in love with half a decade ago. Like the exterior, the interior of the Volvo S60 feels very familiar, but that doesn't make it any less handsome. There are tons of thoughtful details everywhere, ranging from the contrast colors to the dashboard stitching and the seat piping, to this beautiful swath of aluminum aluminum trim that arcs around the infotainment cluster and spans the entire width of the dash in front of the passenger. There are also a lot of great interior details elsewhere in the cabin, like this satisfyingly clicky engine switch and this genuine Aurifor's crystal gear selector. This is exclusive to the flagship trim level, but it's fantastic and it looks wonderful. The interior is also very well done in some fantastic materials. Even down low, this door plastic is soft and squishy to the touch, and the carpet that wraps up the side of the center console feels much more premium than the hard plastic that you'd find in some of the competitors. The tech suite of the Volvo S60 is also pretty fresh and modern, at least on the surface. There's a standard 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster and a nine inch touchscreen display on the center of the dashboard. But once you start to dig in, things fall apart just a little bit in terms of how easy it is to use. There just aren't enough hard buttons to make simple adjustments when you're on the fly. For example, if you want to adjust the climate controls in any other way but temperature, you have to go into the touchscreen and then select your fan speed or your air direction or what have you. And the heated seats are no better. You have to go into a specific menu for the heated seats and steering wheel and then make your adjustments there. There also isn't a way to adjust the drive mode unless you go into vehicle settings and hit driving and then you have your choices there. But that's still just a little bit frustrating when you wanna just switch the thing into pure electric or hybrid power or whatever, you want it to just be a button right here instead of something you have to dig into the infotainment system for. But there are still a few redeeming qualities in the S60's technology package. For example, the optional Bowers & Wilkins audio system is phenomenal, possibly one of the best in-car audio systems I've heard in a long time if you have access to lossless audio. There's a really great feature in the audio system that allows you to select the play mode that you wanted to come across with, including a stage mode that's modeled off of the Gothenburg Concert Hall in Sweden. So if you wanna take a trip to Sweden but don't necessarily wanna swing the plane tickets, just come on out to your Volvo, queue up some lossless audio and crank it. That high quality premium interior definitely sets the stage for what the Volvo S60 has to offer once you get out on the road. It's not necessarily intended to be a hardcore high performance driving machine, but that doesn't mean it's not totally competent and capable of handling a road like this. Now, when you get into the infotainment system and set the car up to its most aggressive power setting, it uncorks the full power of the two liter turbocharged engine under the hood, as well as the electric motor driving the rear axle. That gives you a total of 450 
5 horsepower and 523 pound-feet. The S60 has what's known as through-the-road all-wheel drive, which means the gas engine powers the front axle and the electric motor powers the rear, with the 18.8 kilowatt-hour battery taking up residence in the center of the vehicle under the center tunnel, where you'd expect to find a drive shaft in a conventional all-wheel drive car. Now, I've got to admit, I'm not actually a huge fan of the turbocharged and supercharged engine found in Volvo's other vehicles, and that's because the power delivery is a little bit lumpy. When the supercharger starts to peter out and the turbocharger comes online, it feels like they're not necessarily shaking hands particularly seamlessly. But when you've got something wearing the recharge badge, that electric motor backfills that torque beautifully. So the experience is much smoother and more confident and confidence inspiring than it would be in a vehicle with a slightly lumpier power curve. As a result, the recharge is surprisingly fun to drive in spite of the fact that it weighs 4,400 plus pounds. That is a whole lot of weight for a car this size, but the Volvo hides its mass well. The Volvo also does a decent job of masking its understeer pretty well. If you push really hard, it definitely rears its ugly head, but you can dial it back just a little bit by lifting off the throttle in the middle of the corner and letting the tail kind of come back into a neutral attitude. There's also more than enough brake in the S60, especially when you have the shifter in its B mode, which uncorks the full force of regenerative braking. It's honestly some of the best regen I've ever experienced in a car that isn't a pure electric. It gives you lots of stopping power the moment you lift off the accelerator, which helps both efficiency and performance. One quick thing to note, when you're outside the car, the two liter engine doesn't sound particularly enthusiastic. In fact, it gets downright thrashy as it reaches the upper revs, but Volvo has done a really good job of masking that noise when you're in Inside the car and they even give it a little bit of active sound design to make it sound more muscular when you're powering out of a corner. The Volvo S60 Recharge that I'm driving costs $63,690. That's for the flagship trim level that also includes the black appearance package and a coat of metallic paint. However, if you can live without the Oraforce Crystal Gear Selector, the Bowers & Wilkins audio system, and the fancy leatherette and textile upholstery, you could get a Volvo S60 Recharge for $52,345 to start. Imagine it, that's more power and less money than any of its competition, including the BMW M340i, Lexus IS500 F Sport, and Acura TLX Type S. To the surprise of no one, the S60 is absolutely stuffed with safety features. That means the usual accoutrement like a full bevy of airbags, traction and stability controls, and the like, but there's also a lot of active safety and driver assistance as well. Every Volvo comes standard with automatic emergency braking and lane departure prevention technology, but if you opt for the higher trims like this model, you also get pilot assist driver assistance, which gives you full speed adaptive cruise control, lane centering technology, blind spot monitoring, just about everything that you can think of. And it all works together to keep the car pretty well centered on the road. I definitely noticed some ping-ponging when I was driving in heavy rain the other night, but that could just be because the camera couldn't pick up the lane lines as they were completely covered with water. Otherwise, it's an easy vehicle to drive in traffic, giving you a whole lot of confidence and space between you and the drivers around you. Inarguably, the Volvo S60 Recharge's greatest trump card over its competition is fuel economy. The EPA says you'll get about 31 miles per gallon combined when you're driving it as a gas electric hybrid, but that's only after you've depleted the 41 miles of pure electric range that you get on a fully charged battery. 41 miles is plenty for most people to handle their daily commutes. I can't remember the last time I drove 41 miles in a single day when I wasn't actually on a road trip. But then again, that's where plug-in electric vehicles make tons of sense. You can kind of just keep driving and refuel the engine as needed at any of the number of gas stations you'll find on the road and not have to worry about your all-electric range. It's honestly the best of both worlds for most people. They can do their entire daily commutes using that 41 miles of all-electric range and easily recharge overnight using a 110 volt outlet, but they still have the long-range flexibility and ease of refueling when they're on long road trips.
Unlike some of its more overtly performance-oriented competition, the S60 Recharge is a much more approachable and cosseting place to spend a daily drive. I can't say enough nice things about these seats, for example. Somehow Volvo just knows how to make chairs for a car that fit you in all the right places and feel very supportive without being overly cushy or confining. It's just this perfect balance of everything. Wind noise is also very hushed, as well as the engine, especially and obviously when you're running in electric mode, and there isn't really a lot of tire roar to speak of. Overall, it's a pretty composed and comfortable place to spend time. However, I will cop to one disappointment. In some of the competitors, when you hit a series of small bumps, you maybe get jostled around a little bit more, but those bumps only happen one time. They kind of just hit and then you're done. In this car, you hit a bump and the initial impact isn't nearly as harsh, but you get some secondary motions that kind of jostle through the structure. It's a little bit disconcerting when you're driving a vehicle that costs more than $60,000 as tested when it has jiggles like that, and it definitely makes the S60 feel a little bit cheaper than it should. With such an aggressive pricing strategy, the Volvo S60 Recharge definitely deserves consideration, but only for a very specific kind of luxury sports sedan customer. There's no denying that the M340i, C43, TLX Type S, and IS500 all offer more in the way of outright driving thrills than the somewhat understated S60. But 455 horsepower and 41 miles of pure electric range are nothing to shake a stick at. So if those numbers appeal to you, then the S60 is a perfect choice. Thanks for watching.